you know what? You take a red coal from the fire and it's gonna, it's gonna cool down. You take a member from the church, he doesn't go to church, he stays home. Soon enough, he's not gonna be on fire for God. He's gonna cool down. Has no more motivation. And so what do we do? Our kids don't have a church because there is no church in that city. There is not one Adventist. What do we do so our kids don't cool down? They lose their interest in the church. What can we do? So what should they do? What do you think? What should you do? If two or three ask something in one accord, it shall be given to them. So what they did, they obeyed Jesus' command. They got together this group of people in Hans' house and they prayed together. How long? Until, thank you, they prayed for about six months. Lord, give us wisdom. We don't know what to do. Give us wisdom and do what we cannot do, Lord. And they said, Lord, we are not going to give up. You remember Jacob when he prayed and said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And what did God say? Please let me go. The morning is coming. Please let me go. Really? God doesn't need to ask permission. Please let me go. <laughs> God could have done. There was no more Jacob, you know. God doesn't need to ask permission. Please, would you? Jacob, let me go. And Jacob says, nah. God has the power to just disappear. Why would God say, please let me go? Because God wanted to see how determined he is. Does he really want as a deer is thirsty for water? So I'm thirsty for you. I'm not going to let you go. I would rather die, but I'm not going to let you go. And God liked that when he was pleading. No, please, I'm not going to let you go. By the way, you remember what happened? But that's not the subject today, okay? He said, bless me. And God, what did God say? Yes or no? Neither. God said, tell me your name. God doesn't have good hearing. He needs hearing aid. Because Jacob says, bless me. And God could say yes or no. But he says, tell me your name. What's the connection between name and blessing? Why would God ask for his name? Because many years before, when his father said, tell me your name, he said, I am Isa. And that's where he sinned. And God could not give him a blessing because he had to fix that. That's where he dropped the ball. And God wanted him to fix that and to stop pretending that he is somebody else and to acknowledge who he is. And what, what did he say when God said, Tell me your name. He said, I am. That means the deceiver. So he acknowledged, Lord, I am a deceiver. I deceive my father. I deceive my brother. I deceive my father-in-law. I deceive everybody. This is who I am. When he acknowledged his sin, as soon as he said, this is who I am, what did God say? I'm going to change your name. You are no longer the deceiver. You are Israel. That means the one who fights with God and he is victorious. In Hebrew, he's not the one who fights with God against God, but the one who fights with God in the same team. From now on, you are in my team. You fight together with me against the enemy. The one who is in God's team in the war. And you are going to be victorious because you are in my team. And God said, not only that I change your name, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing for all nations, and you don't need to fear your brother because I'm going to go ahead of you and fight your battles. And in that night, God showed in a dream to his brother and said, don't you touch him. Because when you stay in prayer and you say, I'm not going to let you go. If you persist in prayer, eventually God does all of that for you. You don't have to do it. He fights your battle. Isn't that beautiful? So the group in Hans' house, they got together and they said, we are going to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and we will not give up. Like the woman or the judge. Like the man that goes to the neighbor at 1 a.m. knocking the gate and the guy says, 
opens the window and says, are you crazy? It's 1 a.m. He says, I got some visitors. I need some bread. Go away. I'm sleeping. The man closes the window. The guy knock, 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 knock in the gate. This guy opens the window. Go away. Closes the window. Knock, knock, knock. After 20 times, he says, you drive me crazy. Hey, I'm not going to go before you give me bread. So you better give me bread to get rid of me. So he says, take the bread and leave me alone. And God says, that's the way you should. If you don't have reserve, it's because you don't pray the way you should. Small prayers, more result. Big prayer, big result. As much as you put your heart into it, that's how many blessings. That's the answer you get. So the group in Han's house said, we are not going to give up. We are going to pray and pray until God answers. And they prayed for six months. After six months, God answered. In that city, they said, Lord, please, please, please do something so there will be a church in that city so our kids have a church to go to. After six months, an old lady got baptized. Uh, she had terminal cancer in the fourth stage dying. And they got really disappointed. God could have baptized somebody young that would have energy and go from door to door and give Bible studies. But God baptized an old lady that has cancer and she is dying. After she dies, we are back to point zero. We have no church member there. But what does the Bible say? All things work together. Don't you ever doubt God's plan. Because God's plan is far from your plan as heaven from earth. You, you need to trust in your God. 